So I'm very pleased to introduce to all of you and Scrambler 11. I'm pleased that all of you, so many people have joined. My name is uh, Lars Jeske. I'm a data scientist and product manager in KMO Analytics. So since its inception in 1984, and Scrambler has been the industry leading tool for multivariate analysis and spectroscopy. It contains powerful and transparent explorative analysis for data owners, for domain experts. It's used for analyzing large data. It has a range of interactive plots that finds the simple structures in complex data and presents them to the user. So it increases the understanding of what's happening with your data and the understanding of the processes. It also used for creating multivariate models that are validated at the correct level. It's very important when you create multivariate models that you understand what the model will be used for and that you ensure that the model will work as, as intended. So therefore we have a lot of good validation tools that are particular for Inscrambler. So Inscrambler, it has been the preferred tool for data owners using MVA and DOE, and it still is, but it just got better. It has more flexibility, better usability, and better speed than previous versions. So regarding flexibility, one of the key new things that you will find in Unscrambler 11 that we haven't had before is Python scripting. So Python is the most used programming, pro programming language in the world for scientific computing. It has seen a very high increase in usage over the last few years. There are 8 million Python developers in the world. It has surpassed Java last year in uh, sort of the um, most used programming language among uh, machine learning developers and data scientists. And finally, and not least, it has a large repository of data science tool and machine learning tools that are publicly available and available for us to use from uh, Inscrambler 11 starting now. Another thing you will notice in the new version is that it has a new user interface, fresh user interface. Camo is blessed with having a community of 25,000 users that are providing feedback to us on a regular basis and continuous basis. We use this feedback to continuously improve our products. And one of the things you will notice in Unscrambler 11 is that uh, there is an enhanced user experience. As an example, we got the feedback that uh, the sample alignment function was very good, but in some cases, if you had missing timestamps, it was a bit difficult to clean your data uh, for the missing timestamps before you started. So based on that feedback, we included a automatic removal of those invalid timestamps so that the analysis now is much more fluent. As another example, we have a multitude of import formats in a scrambler. It's possible to import single spectra, multiple spectra in one go, and so on. One feedback we got was that during import of a guided wave instrument, in this case, we actually uh, the response variables in the file was, were not uh, given in the consistent order. So that means that it was a bit manual task to manually align all the response variables. So therefore, we perform this manually now. And there are more examples like that. 
The third tool or focus we've had is speed of analysis. So what is it that takes more time during an analysis workflow? It has to do with data handling, how you import the data, how you process the data, how you align the data, et cetera. So what is important in this sense is that you can do the analysis with as few manual operations as possible, fewer mouse clicks. And we have done that in various dialogues in, uh, in Scrambler 11. Also, many of the dialogues are much more responsive than they have been previously, easing the daily workflow. Of course, we are not forgetting the past. So we are still, get, we are still providing what you expect from a company such as ourselves, which is following the strictest quality standards, providing compliant software, and I've done that for a number of years already. This year, we were audited by two separate large pharma companies, and we got top grades. One of the auditors specifically said that Camo is a first-class software company. And we are very proud of that. Another thing that you is very important, that we find very important, is the combination of multivariate analysis that you get in a scrambler and design of experiments. So a scrambler comes bundled with design of exper uh, design expert software and uh, with Scrambler 11, you will get Design Expert 12, which came out this year. So the combination of MVA and DOE is very important for quality by design, QBD initiatives. That has to be done in order to improve the quality of your process or your products. Last but not least, I want to mention again the community that you will get access to as a maintenance customer, where a lot of users with expert knowledge get together, share ideas, uh, ask questions, and uh, come with uh, feedback to the software and questions to the software. So what about Python scripting? What we are doing with Python scripting is that we are expanding the Unscrambler universe because we combine the Unscrambler's ease of use with the flexibility that you get from scripting. So that means that you don't have to do everything in Python anymore. And uh, you're not limited by the methods already available in Unscrambler. You get the best of both worlds. You have access to all the thousands of machine learning methods already available, whether you want to do modeling or uh, data cleaning, transformations, what you want to do. And also, of course, we encourage users to share their own scripts, which can be done via our community, so that you get, for instance, data handling, data pre-processing scripts that are useful for spectroscopists, for instance. So the way we have implemented Python scripting in Unscrambler is that you open the Unscrambler user interface and you call the Python scripts from within Unscrambler. So we keep all the ease of use and we get all the results that you need from various methods. It's also possible to save different configurations so you don't have to set them up again every time we want to use a method. So that's also saving time. So what can an example Python script look like? So this is from a different uh, software. This is just a code viewing uh, software, text editor. And uh, any data scientist familiar with Python is, uh, will be able to recognize what's happening here. So first, you import all the libraries you need. One of the libraries is called PyCamo and is shipped with Unscrambler 11. So you install this uh, PyCamo library in your favorite Python environment, and then you can use it by calling it from a scrambler. Next, you can define any number of methods that you prefer, 
And in this case, I, I will show this example later, but what this particular method does is that it's uh, calling a uh, method called tsne from a publicly available uh, library called scikit-learn, and then it applies uh, tsne clustering on data that are fetched from in Scrambler. There are two main methods that are included in our PyCamo library, which is configure, where you can configure the initial output of scripts, and also the most important one called start. So everything that is written in the start method will be executed once you click a button in Scrambler 11. So now I want to go to a demo and just show you quickly what Scrambler 11 looks like. So it starts up like a breeze. This is a new interface that people will recognize if you're used in Scrambler previous versions of uh, Scrambler before. This will look new, but it will be recognizable. So you have the analysis window here, you have the project navigator, the info tab, and we have, have the toolbar. So for new users, it might be interesting to see all the different imports that you can use, both spectroscopic imports and, and uh, generic imports. In the, even though this is a new product, the model structure is the same, so you can import your old models using the existing Scrambler import. So you can reuse your existing models. That's important. We have a number of plots that we show later. We have a large range of transformations, including transformations for spectroscopic data. And we have very powerful explorative methods that you need for explorative analysis, predictions, classifications. I mentioned the Python scripting which you can find here in the tools menu. There are some shortcuts here to predefined configurations. I can, uh, for instance, use a script that just imports some uh, data from somewhere. And what you see here is the dialog that opens. So this is all the configurations that you, can, that you have ever saved. So you can scroll through these. Here you define your environment. Here you define your script file, like the one I showed you earlier, you define the logging level, whether debug, info, etc., and you can run the script. So then you have some console output here. You close the window. What this method did was actually to import some data, which it did. So this was just an example. What I wanted to show also is what can this be used for? So here I have uh, imported some data. It's uh, actually 800 samples and 6,000 gene expressions from a publicly available data set. These uh, 800 samples are actually biopsy samples from uh, five different cancer types, breast cancer, colon, kidney, lung, and prostate. And the question then is, how do these different uh, tumors differentiate from each other? So, of course, what we can do is that we can uh, plot. Look how easily and Scrambler can be used for plotting data. These are just plotting the raw data. So this is one gene expression versus another. You can toggle through the different uh, variables here, and notice it's automatically grouped by cancer type. However, this is not, you can do this in Excel as well. What is powerful with multivariate data analysis is that you want to condense as much as possible information down into a few number of informative plots. So here, for instance, I've done a principal component analysis, and with these two components here, I span 35% of the initial uh, of the variation in the entire data set of 6,000 variables. 
you see the cancer groups are separated out. And if you look at additional components, you will see additional cancer groups separating out as well, additional patterns. And it corresponds to uh, the map of loadings showing the individual gene expressions. Then we also have a regression method, prediction method called partially squares. Most of you are familiar with it. And this method does uh, produces the same or similar plots as uh, principal component analysis. However, it is specifically targeted to predict or classify which uh, group these different um, samples belong to. So you see the separation is uh, a bit different. And uh, you can see from various plots here that uh, if you do this, uh, if you do this prediction or classification, the classification will be very good. But I wanted to show this is well known for most of you. So what I want to show is how we do Python scripting, because it could be interesting to see how TSNE clustering are performing for these data, for instance. But that can very easily be done here. We're going to tools, Python scripting and clicking on the shortcut that I already created. This is the script that I already showed you in the slide previously. So once I click the uh, open this uh, shortcut, I get the Python scripting dialog. I can just click run script. So what it's doing now is that it opens the unscrambler matrix selector with information here that I, you need to select the data matrix for clustering. So what I can do, I have a predefined column set that I can click with all the variables that I have. But also, uh, I want to show you something else you can do. You can click this uh, button here, go to the existing models that you have, and rather than clustering the entire number of manifest or original variables, you can cluster the latent variables or the scores instead. So what I've done here is that I've combined PCA scores uh, by selecting these and sending them to clustering. So now I'm clustering based on these 15 scores. And notice I've not uh, given any input regarding uh, class, um, which classes uh, things belong to. However, I wanted to I want to color the resulting classes in based on the class information. So that I can do here. I open a dialog here just to input the classes. And you will see once the script completes, I have this uh, result here where one of the classes have been, where all the classes have been uh, added. So now I have the known class information and I want to plot these components that have been returned from TSNI and see what they look like. Again, very easily done and see how well this method separates the uh, samples into the correct clusters. There are some differences here that are not so well classified. And of course, one of the criticisms against uh, TSNI is that you don't know how these uh, clusters relate to each other. But the separation is great. Another example can be ra a random forest classifier. So this is a supervised classification method. Well, TSNI was unsupervised, random forest is supervised. So we can show that as well. Again, I want to work on the scores. In this case, the class assignments are actually used as input to the method. I click OK. You can see in the console in output that anything you want to print to console is written here. And you can see the classification here. And again, I've appended the classes. I switched to them to category because that means that they can be automatically used for coloring sample grouping these observations. So what you see here along the axis, the first axis is the probability that any of these observations belong to the breast cancer class. What's on the second axis, the probability that any uh, observation belongs to a colon cancer class. And you see that the 
this looks quite well. This is actually the predicted samples. I can also plot the reference classes, and you see that some of them change. Uh, by the way, this is the results from performing a prediction on test data that were kept out of the modeling. So it's more sort of realistic, conservative, validated than uh, presenting the results from just from the tra training data. You can toggle through the different uh, classes to see how the different um, uh, classes are classified or predicted. So this was a short view of Scrambler 11, how it was working with the scripting. So what's next? What you see here is the date, 25th of November, that you can remember when Scrambler 11 will be available for download. So this is the release date of Scrambler 11, not too long from now. So what will you get then? You will get Scrambler 11. You will get the plugins, including our batch modeling method, different methods for media scattering, connection to various databases, and more. You will get the option between standalone or network editions. If you if you prefer Japanese over English, that's available as always. And note that this new software, new product, is included for community members on the maintenance program. If you want to buy the software, you can go to www.kemo.com or you can contact sales at kemo.com directly. So that's it. Thank you for listening and stay tuned. Look into our websites on the 25th for downloading this software. This uh, webinar, as I mentioned earlier, will be available as a recording and you will all get an email after this with more information.